hello. So you guys know that I don't really set goals of reading a specific number of books per year. I loosely do, but I don't stick to that very much. But I know that for a lot of you, it's very important to hit your goal for the number of books that you want to read each year. As we approach the end of the year and we are very quickly running out of time to finish reading books and to hit that number, I thought maybe you guys would like some book recommendations for very short books that are very quick to read in case you need to boost your number a bit. Even though that goes exactly against one of the last couple videos I've made. This is not something I will be doing this year, but I know it's very common. A lot of people want to read 25 books, 50 books, 75, 100, whatever your number is for the year. And if you are close to that, you might want to reach for one of these books to help you achieve that goal as we near the end of 2021, which is just wild to me. So I think I have about 15 books to recommend to you guys today, and they are across pretty much every single genre. So I'd almost guarantee there's something that you might like on this list, regardless of what your favorite genre is. I think everything on this list is for sure under 300 pages. Some of them are under 100. Most of them are between like 100 and 200. So let's get into the list. The first book I'm going to recommend is about 76 pages, and that is And Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer, a novella by Frederick Bachman. I absolutely adore this book. I cried my eyes out. Like I was listening to the audiobook of it as I got home and I sat in my Jeep and just bald because it was so impactful and it definitely deals with some really touchy subjects so maybe know that going into it but we're following a couple different generations in this family and it's dealing with dementia and loss of a loved one and a little boy and his grandfather and it was just so precious and heartwarming and heartbreaking for 76 pages so if you like to cry and you like emotionally impactful books Go for this one. Coming in at 112 pages, we have Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. This is a horror novel that I read this year. And it reads so quickly because as you can see, most of these pages are told in instant messaging format or emails. So you can absolutely fly through this in a couple hours. So it's about these two women who meet in a chat room over an object, an item that is for sale and it follows their relationship as it progresses and changes into something quite frightening and it's pretty graphic at times and I couldn't put it down. I really had a great time reading this. So if you like horror, go for this one. At 128 pages, we have The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin, which is one of my favorite SF Masterworks books that I've read so far. This deals with some important topics as well, especially like colonialism, deforestation, racism, slavery in a very unique way. And the story that Le Guin was able to tell within such a small amount of pages absolutely blew my mind. Um, I want to reread this already, but I read this in two days. And if you don't know where to start with Ursula K. Le Guin, I would argue that this might be a good place to start with to get you interested in her works because it's very short and it's very accessible compared to some other things that I've read, but it keeps your attention the entire time. So if you're looking for a sci-fi, you cannot go wrong with this book. So this is 214 pages, which is In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt. But as you can see, it's a very small book and it's pretty big spacing. So this is kind of like a twist on your classic fairy tale. It is sort of deconstructing these typical tropes that we've seen with women in fairy tales throughout the years. It is almost genre defying, very mind bending. You don't really know what's going on a lot of the time, which turned out to be a really great thing for me. Um, I feel like it would take a reread for me to fully grasp and comprehend what was happening. However, the once through time that I read it in about two days during a readathon, I had an excellent time reading it. So I definitely recommend it. If you like fantasy, that you are not sure what's really happening, if you like unreliable narrators, if you like magical realism, and if you like 
like stories a bit darker with like some feminist themes, this is for you. Okay, switching it up a bit, we have Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. I recommend this all the time. It's about 200 pages. It's a very easy to read novella that follows the story of what takes place in Middle Game by Shauna McGuire since they are the same author. It is following these two children that could not be more different from one another and this journey they have to go on together, the things that they have to accomplish, working together and meeting different characters and people along the way. It is very charming and heartwarming. It's really a great message and a feel good story, but it reads very, very quickly. So I recommend this to everybody, especially if you like middle grade, but even if you're on the fence about middle grade, I think this one could win you over. Now, completely opposite from that, we have Magma by Thora. Oh, one of you guys told me how to say this and I forgot. Um, I believe this is a translated novel and it's about 200 pages, but huge font and spacing. And a lot of the chapters are this long. So you, you have just like one single paragraph on the page. This is analyzing a very toxic, abusive relationship between a man and a woman that's very manipulative. It is very triggering if you've been through anything like that. Found it relatable at times, all too relatable actually, but it was a great depiction of what it can feel like to be in a relationship like this. So if you sort of have never been in that situation, I recommend it so you can get some perspective for those who have, or if you have been through this situation, you might find it therapeutic to read something that hits so close to home that is so relatable. But as the back says, it sheds light on the undercurrents of violence that so often goes undetected in romantic relationships. She definitely illustrates the failings of our culture in recognizing symptoms of cruelty and in powerful prose depicts the unspooling of a tender-hearted woman desperate to love well. Absolutely love this. Let's do a nonfiction. So at about 150 pages, we have Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. This is a book that the author wrote in like a letter form to his son. It says, Americans have built an empire on the idea of race, a falsehood that damages us all, but falls most heavily on the bodies of black women and men, bodies exploited through slavery and segregation, and today threatened, locked up, and murdered out of all proportion. What is it like to inhabit a black body and find a way to live within it? And how can we all honestly reckon with this fraught history and free ourselves from its burden? So he talks a lot about historical events, his own life events and experiences that he's been through in this heartfelt letter to his son. It was very heartbreaking to read because it makes you very emotional, but I do think that everyone should read it. So it's very quick to get through. It's an excellent, audiobook narrated by the author as well. Okay, let's go for one that I've read just more recently that is about 175 pages as well, and that is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by D. Shaw Filia. And this is a collection of short stories of black women in different generations sort of struggling to find out who they want to be versus who they are told to be, whether that is from the church or from relatives, how they were raised to be brought up, the struggles, the temptations, the urges, and just the life that they want for themselves. I just wanna read this, it says, let it be known, I did not fall from grace, I leapt to freedom. Ansel Elkins, Autobiography of Eve. So if you like to, discuss religion um, and feminist, feminist topics, then I would listen to this. This is a great audiobook, by the way. I think I listened to it in maybe two days, something very quick. Okay, another one that is a bit different, and it is just under 200 pages, but The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace. And I just love the back that says, burn whoever tries to burn you. This is one of my favorite poetry collections ever. So although it is 200 pages, the pages look like this. And you can see just an example here. I absolutely love Amanda Lovelace. I love her poetry. I take screenshots of these. I need to just reread this from time to time because it is so inspiring and uplifting and empowering. It says, for the girl on fire, thank you for inspiring me to gently set the world alight. You may have a gown of flames, but those same flames run through my veins. And to all the princesses, to all the damsels, to all the queens, 
you have rescued yourselves so many times now and I am in awe of you. It's a great poetry collection, especially if you're not sure where to start with poetry and you like more modern poetry, I definitely recommend this. Let's jump back to another sci-fi. About 150 pages again is the novella To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers, which is my favorite thing she's written. I am not her biggest fan, but I adore this novella. So the reason I love this is because it sort of takes a look at terraforming and the human footprint and impact that we can have specifically on other planets in the universe in this book, but we can definitely draw a lot of parallels between this and what's happening in our world and what we are doing to the planet Earth. So I think that the character work is great in this, but specifically the themes that are discussed and the different sci-fi concepts in this. It's a very quick read. I listened to the audiobook of this as well. You can get through it very quickly. And I just thought it was a great little story that packed a punch in the amount of pages that Becky Chambers took to write it. So I highly recommend this novella. This is like the novella that made me want to continue reading novellas. Let's switch it back to a fantasy horror. At 178 pages is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is about a man who returns to his hometown for a funeral. And as he's there, all of these memories start returning of things that happened from his childhood, people he once knew, um, events that occurred at the location that he's at. I think that it's, considered magical realism. Maybe I'm getting that wrong, but it definitely has that type of vibe in my opinion. There are like creepy, horrific elements to the story that are graphic that I really enjoyed. They're like triggers of mine involving worms, but the writing was absolutely beautiful. It's very easy and quick to read or listen to, and it's just a stunning experience overall. So if you are intrigued by the combination of like fantasy and horror or magical realism, then I would give this a go. Okay, switching back to a sci-fi that is just under 200 pages is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Once again, you can see the size of the book. It's a very short pages, so you can get through it so quickly. But this is about a team of four women, an anthropologist, a surveyor, a psychologist, and a biologist that go to map the terrain at this Area X where everyone has either killed themselves or bad things have happened to them. There, if they return, they are changed, they are not the same. So obviously something very horrific is happening, but there are really cool sci-fi elements and I am a sucker for the horror sci-fi combination of genres and this is like the perfect example of how to do it in my opinion so it is so quick to get through it will put you on the edge of your seat it will have you feeling uneasy the entire time time that you're reading it i can almost guarantee you won't regret picking this book up so if you like sci-fi this is a short one once again at 192 pages that i think is a recommendation you cannot go wrong with is the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy by douglas adams this is such a fun fast-paced sci-fi book. I listened to the audiobook of this, but it reads very quickly as well. There's just lots of dialogue. It's so funny and quirky. Okay, like together this dynamic pair begin a journey through space aided by a galaxy full of fellow travelers. A two-headed, three-armed ex-hippie and totally out to lunch president of the galaxy, a chronically depressed robot, a graduate student obsessed with the disappearance of all the ballpoint pens he's bought over the years. Where are these pens? Why are we born? Why do we die? Why do we spend so much time in between wearing digital watches? For all the answers, stick your thumb to the stars. If you've not experienced Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like I'm a little bit sad for you genuinely and do yourself a favor and read it or listen to it because I don't know anyone that can read this book and have a bad time doing it. I don't. If you have, if you don't like this book, tell me in the comments and tell me why. I don't believe you. Okay, the next two are just a little bit longer and I guess we'll go with the shortest of the two first, that being Pyrenees Sea by Susanna Clark, which is one of my favorite books of the year, about 250 pages. However, I listened to the audiobook of it. It reads so quickly. The pages are not like super packed full of text. So once you start reading this, you can't put it down because it is so it makes you so full of wonder and curiosity that you're dying to turn the page to figure out what's going to happen next. As I said, I listened to the audiobook and all I could do was keep making myself perform whatever tasks needed to be done, laundry, cleaning, whatever, because I needed to continue listening to find out what was going to happen. The prose is absolutely stunning. Some of the most beautiful writing I've read this year. Piranesi is just 
an absolutely precious, heartwarming, lovable character. So if you have a little bit more time, this one is about 250 pages. And the longest one that's just under 300, I think like 270 pages, is The Humans by Matt Haig. However, this reads very quickly, a lot of dialogue. Um, it's very accessible and not hard to get through, even though it's kind of a little bit longer. Basically in this, an alien comes back to Earth to impersonate a human because humans have solved Raymond's hypothesis, which is the thing that's been holding them back from excelling and succeeding in time travel, all these things that other species throughout the galaxy have already been successful in doing. And so he wants to kill whoever has done that basically. So really this looks at what it means to be a human, what it means to be alive and love. And it is so funny, laugh out loud, funny, while being very heartwarming, very touching. And it's just one of my favorite sci-fi books of all time. I recommend it to people all the time. There you have 15 books that are short, that you can get through very quickly. And even if you only choose to read one of these, even if you only have time to read one more book, for the rest of the year, that's okay, no pressure. I just thought it was a fun idea to recommend short books to you guys that I personally love and had a great time reading in case you need to boost your numbers for your Goodreads goal. But I just, once again, want to reiterate, no pressure on how many books you read per year. I do not like promoting, making it a competition or anything of the sorts. I just want to give you guys some recommendations today. So. Let everyone else know what are your short book recommendations in the comments below. I tried to do a variety of poetry, nonfiction, magical realism, fantasy, sci-fi, short stories, etc. So definitely leave recommendations for every genre you can think of in the comments. So there's plenty for people to pick from. And let me know if you guys decide to read any of these books. Are there a certain number of books you are hoping to finish by the end of the year? I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>